Welcome back to the IU427 Garage, everybody. As you can see behind me, we have the 25th anniversary car up on the lift, up in the air, and we're continuing work on the Ford control pack wiring along with the Ron Francis wiring harness. All right, everybody, as, uh, as you heard me say in the intro, we are working on wiring still. Um, I don't have the luxury of just uh, choosing what I want to work on. You know, there are deadlines to meet on projects, and in order to get this one to the next crucial step, we need to get this wiring done. So what I've been working on on the front of the car is getting all of the wiring completed for all of our speed hut gauge sensor wiring and I've already got the oil pressure and the water temperature gauge pretty much squared away but before I got too far I wanted to kind of show you what we're going to be doing for each of these and how to use utilize or best utilize all the parts that you get from both Ron Francis and speed hut gauges so you're not wasting a bunch of the material that they give you in order to make everything work together so as you can see right here, I have the two wires that are going to go to our oil temperature sensor that is located, oh, where is it at? Right here in the car. So we pulled out one of the factory bungs, we put a reducer in there, and we have our gauge sensor in here. Now it's going to be tight. But there's really no other spot to put this. Um, Moroso didn't give us a whole lot of options as to placement on this, this particular uh, sensor. So we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, I looked at the, the bung in the front, but it's not in the sump. And we really want it in the T-sump. So with that, this was the only spot that we had available in order to get that sensor in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this harness see if I can get this in the light for you over on the bench so we're going to take this harness that is supplied with the speed hut gauges and you can see on this end it's got a clip that's going to go into that sensor and on the other end it has a clip that goes into the gauges well this is already on the dash portion of the wiring in the Ron Francis dash harness so what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in to our sensor and then we're going to measure off a length of this wire so that it'll reach our existing chassis harness wiring. Alright, it ended up taking two hands to get that in. It's, it's a tight fit. I mean we've got maybe a half inch of clearance between the edge of the connector and the four inch round tube. But like I said, we don't have any other good alternatives here so that's where it's got to stay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, we're going to grab these wires we're going to route them below everything here and you can kind of see where I've got my oil pressure sensor and my engine coolant sensor right here. We're going to route those two wires for the um, oil temperature right along here and what I'll probably end up doing is putting a couple of cushion clips, probably one here and one over here on these two um, oil pan bolts and that'll keep our harness tucked nicely underneath the uh, front of the T-sump right here. So I'm going to get started working on that and I'll bring you guys back when I've got that uh, a little bit farther along. Alright, a little farther along. As you can see, I've married the two harnesses basically together. The Speed Hut and the Ron Francis here at the oil temperature connector. So nothing too glamorous. We've just got... Um, two wires soldered together and then some uh, shrink tubing over the end of them. Now you can use all different types of shrink tube. Uh, I like the stuff with the adhesive in it um, but you know in something like this where it's probably not going to be subject to a whole lot of abuse um, you could probably use this stuff without it um, and there's always going to be a debate whether you, sh you should use some type of crimp connector or solder. 
and this is my feeling. If it's in a high stress era, meaning if you're soldering um, wires onto a fixed component, let's say you were soldering onto like the back of a, a, a gauge pot or something like that, where the wire could move, but yet that gauge pot is not. It's, it's going to stay stationary. I wouldn't solder in a, in a situation like that. But in a situation like this, where both of the wires are going to move together, as the, as the car is going down the, the, the road, this, this harness is going to bounce around. I mean, we're going to do everything we can to get the wires all strapped up underneath the car so they're nice and neat and tidy. But they're going to move. Um, but they're going to move together. And so I don't think that soldering in that type of situation is bad. So that's why I choose to solder. I do like to solder... Um, the terminals that I use in my weather pack connectors too. I just think it's another layer of protection. Um, again, in those areas that you, you're not going to want to get to later on. So like in the rear fender wells where we put the uh, connectors for the real, rear taillights, I generally always solder those. Um, I've just gotten a habit of soldering the ones in the front too because I normally am doing them at the same time and I get into a rhythm and I, and I just tend to do them that way. But, you know, you can choose to do this however you want. You could use the the uh, Stacon, the, the crimp type terminals on these, the butt connectors, but I just think they, they, they look kind of uh, uh, messy. They're not neat. And once you solder them and you put the, sh the shrink tubing on them and then you've got it inside the split loom, um, it takes up less room in the split room, split loom as well without that, uh, that butt connector on there. Um, so there you go. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get this uh, placed under the car. I'm going to get the split loom put on it, and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like all finished. All right, so here you go. The finished line is strapped with some cushion clips there, there, around the crank pulley, there, and over on the other side. And yes, we torque those uh, oil pan bolts down to the specified torque setting, and that's all good. And then up here, you can see where we tied into our oil pressure sensor, and just above that is the coolant temperature sensor. So before this all gets wrapped up, it'll get some uh, tie wraps and some of this stuff. I just want to keep the wires up out of the way. I'm not a fan of, you know, putting tie wraps everywhere where they're visible behind the dash and stuff like that is cool but i just try to limit the amount of tie wraps that i put you know anywhere that's going to be exposed so i think what we're probably going to move on to tomorrow night is getting the battery in place and then getting our ground tied into our ground stud right there and then get our positive cable tied into the starter right there and then the rest of the wiring is just going to be stuff behind the dash. So that shouldn't take us all that long to get that stuff squared away. And then hopefully in, uh, like I said, the next couple weeks we'll be able to uh, get the owner down here and uh, we'll do a first start on this thing. All right, I shared this tip in the last video. But um, split loom, what is this, quarter inch by 14 feet long? This was $3.29. And then I, I picked up some of the 3 8 diameter stuff too. And I think for 10 feet, that was $2.99. So you're not going to find it for those prices at the home center. So say what you will about Harbor Freight, that's a pretty good deal. That's where I buy the split loom, and, you know, it's just split loom. So... Uh, one other tip that I wanted to share with you guys, these uh, cutoffs that you're going to have from the Speed Hut wiring harness, if nothing else, save these ends. What I always do for the car owners is I, I usually cut off a piece on the end of this from the connector back about 12 inches long. So you can see I've got one, two, three, and uh, there, I've got two different types here. This is a three wire, the other two are two wire. And uh, I just put them in the gauge box. And that way, if at any point they are um, having to repair or replace the gauges, these clips are actually kind of fragile. And uh, I've had one that, uh, that, it, that, that, that the clip portion of it, this little clip right here, has broken off. 
and it'll it'll go in but it won't necessarily stay there and so by having a couple of these extra you can you know take the cutoff solder it on and then you've got a brand new connector on the end so um, that's what I do and uh, I would uh, urge you to do the same all right, everybody next day I am working underneath the car getting all of the battery cables in place so right here on our ground stud you can see I've got our main battery ground that's going to go to our battery it's hanging down right here and the one with the, the uh, split loom on it right there is our positive and it's going over to the starter and it's not in its final spot right now I'm going to make it a little neat but I did need this loop on it to keep it away from anything that I might come in contact with so it'll be pulled back away from the oil pan a little bit and then it's going to run down the four inch tube where it's going to meet up with the ground cable and so those are going to both go forward and then you can see over here i do have the battery in place and i do have it tied down um, just snug you don't have to over tighten them you put too much pressure on them you're going to crack the plastic case that the battery is in and then it's going to leak so don't do that um, let me lower the car down and I'll give you a peek on top, show you where we're going to strap those cables and how we're going to finish up the battery. Okay, so you can see back in here is where we've got our positive cable tied on and then this right here is that cable and we're going to wrap it kind of around the engine mount here and then on this side we'll probably put split loom on this as well and these will be tandem, they'll be side by each right here. I'll probably put a cushion clip here and a cushion clip over here just to keep them in line. And then I've got the, the negative battery cable on the post. Now I haven't gotten to the testing phase so I've got to make sure that uh, I don't connect both of them before I have a chance to uh, check everything to make sure everything is uh, wired correctly. But a uh, little common sense here, just don't connect both of the cables until you're ready and uh, those little plastic caps that they give you for your battery keep them on there and uh, you're less likely to short anything out drop a wrench on them or anything you know stupid like that but um, I think that's gonna wrap it up for tonight so I will catch up with you guys tomorrow night all right everybody it's uh, it's been a couple days I've actually been working on Jim's car the past two three days getting it all finished up as a matter of fact it's going home in uh, just a couple days I think two more days and it'll be going home we've got it all detailed I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse of the front of it right there it really turned out nice so before I ended this one I wanted to make sure that uh, we went through and talked about the battery and the battery cables so the battery is mounted now I've just got the negative battery cable on there because I was working on the length for it so I wanted to make sure I had the proper length the uh, positive side is not connected we won't connect both of them at the same time until we get ready to put some power to the Ron Francis harness and char uh, and uh, start checking each individual circuit however the battery is secured um, we've used the bracket that mark over at breeze provides for that and it's all in place and it's held down and you can see that we've got the positive cable it's just kind of tucked over there off to the side let me grab a light here real quick and uh we'll get you guys in there and show you exactly how those cables turned out So the cables are running right here on the chassis. I've got a couple of cushion clips to hold them in place. And then over here, you can see it goes to our ground stud. And then back this way, it actually ties on to the terminal on our starter. So all that's done. And uh, what I've been working on today is getting some of the stuff that goes to the dash squared away um, we have all of the seat heater circuits right here we lengthened all of the wiring that goes to the seat heaters I don't like putting these relays under the seats and you can see I've already marked them 
passenger side and driver's side they're upside down so I'll turn them over for you so driver's side and passenger side um, we lengthen those wires to run down the tunnel and maintain the relays at the front and I even went through the trouble of upsizing the wires that goes back there just for any chance of voltage drop so these will probably get mounted to the side of the dash brace right here and then the wires will get tucked in I've got to come back here and I've got to go ahead and land both the grounds for our trailer light converter but uh, I'm just going to continue plugging along. You'll probably see some of this in the next video. I'm working on some of the wires to go to the dash harness. Um, I'm just kind of concentrating all my efforts right now on wiring to get this thing ready. Um, there's still some stuff to get it ready for first start. I've got to tighten all the clamps on the cooling li uh, coolant lines for, for uh, the heater and whatnot in order to uh, add coolant to the system. But... Um, like I said, my main goal right now is just to get all of this electrical um, kind of under control before I go back to the cooling system and get all the heater hoses taken care of. So I think this is going to wrap it up on this one. And we'll continue on some of the wiring behind the dash and maybe even the uh, cool cooling hoses or the heating hoses the next time. So until then, if you're enjoying the content, please do the like the share, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.